there, fellow wackadoos. Welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Q Basic Asylum, where, as always, I am the one, the only, the legend, my own mind, Dr. Doodle. Hey, so welcome back. Uh, it's been a minute since my last video, but uh, you know, the holidays, chicanery going on, and things to worry about, and everything else. Do you believe it's been a year and almost three weeks thereabouts since my first video? But check it out. This is a special one, man. Oh, I spy for you this time. This here is special because this is, we've, we've done it. We've hit two digits, right? The big 1-0, 1, -0, 1 -0, episode 10. Ah, fanfare, confetti, dancing girls. Da, 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 da. Well, anyway, so yeah, special episode number 10. We're two digits. Woohoo! Who'd believe that we'd, we'd make it this far? Anyhow, so a special one for you this time. I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to love this. We're working with the mouse. You know, it's for the mouse, you know, the computer mouse. Uh, but you know, we're gonna we learn how to use the mouse in our QBasic programs. I don't mean just the editor. I mean how to write programs that use the mouse. So just like a Windows thing, you can click here, click there, menus, what have you. It's gonna be great and pretty simple. So uh, yeah, here we go. Check it out. Over here. All right. So about a bazillion of years ago, I decided I'd like to use the mouse in my QBasic codes. That of course I couldn't find any information on how to use it. So I searched everywhere about uh, programming the mouse and all that, and eventually came up with a routine, which you'll see we cover here. But uh, now, it, when I, I created all this, I thought uh, other people might want to use this, so I created an article on what's called uh, the website instructables.com. It is still there. You can go check it out if you want. Uh, and But I'll cover some things that I don't really touch in that article. I'll, I'll leave a link to the article below. And, down there, that thing, and you can check that as well, which uh, some of the things it covers a little better, but there's some points that I don't really touch upon. So I'm creating this video to to explain how the mouse is used, and we'll bring up our first program, QB Mouse, and take a look and see how it happens. All right, here we are. We brought up QBMouse.base, uh, which is the, the simplest mouse program I've written here. This is, oh, back in 1999. Woohoo! That's a pre-millennial. In any case, so it's a pretty simple function, really. It's run this, see what happens. Bang, run, start. Uh, got DOSBox doing its nonsense. Well, here we've got the, the buttons, horizontal position and vertical position up here. The button, if you know, I press one. Boop. Oh, look at there. It says one, two. Now, if, what happened here? Well, if you press button one, you just draw a pixel around the screen, a line, what have you. Draw a button two, clears the screen, and then both buttons together, beep. It just ends the program. Finito. So that's all there is to it. But now, it's pretty simple. Uh, let's give me full screen here. Boop. Uh, take a look, starting from the top, we got declare sub mouse. Now this is the sub sub procedure, excuse me, that uh, that actually does, that actually interfaces with the mouse. It does all the heavy lifting of, of, of calling the mouse, uh, mouse driver, like the MS-DOS mouse driver, and then it, it interacts with that and gives you information that you need to use the mouse. So, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Now, screen 12, this is the graphics mode. We've set it in graphics mode 12, which is uh, 640 by 480 pixels in 16 colors. Now, mouse 1, this calls the mouse routine, or mouse procedure, uh, function 1, which is to show the mouse cursor. Now, we go do, which is the start of the main program. We'll scroll down here so you can see there, there's the main program. It was do, seen the do loop before. There's do and loop down here. So we start, first thing we do is mouse three. What that does, it reads the mouse buttons and coordinates. We locate one, one, top left, and print buttons, horizontal and vertical. So this line here, it just, excuse me, this line here, it just prints out the, the button, but what buttons press, one, two, or both, uh, the horizontal position and vertical position. Select case B. Now this is if you press a button, if B is not zero, then which button is pressed? In the case of one, that's the left button, we call mouse two. Mouse two hides the cursor. Mouse three then reads the, the mouse, where is it at the time? And then line step zero, zero, H and V. Now H is the horizontal position, V is the vertical position, then 14 draws a yellow line. So in other words, when you press the left button, that's case one, it, it turns out the mouse cursor, reads where it is, draws a line. It then turns the mouse cursor back on. Now, if you happen to hit the, the right button, which is case two, well, then we go to mouse two here to hide the mouse cursor. Just clear the screen. 
mouse one shows the mouse cursor again, and then case three, we drop out of the main loop. If you hit both buttons, exit two, drop out of the main loop, and the program. So end select, so we got the select B buttons, end select here, and then loop back to the top. That's really all there is to it. When you drop out of the X, the loop, excuse me, we exit the program, the first thing to do, to call mouse two to turn off the mouse cursor. We clear the screen, print finito, and then system to end the program. Bang, simple as that. So how does this work? Again, let's take a look, view, subs, mouse. This is the subroutine, as I say, I've mentioned. Uh, is this subroutine provides mouse support to basic, basic games. It's called the one parameter and perform, performs as follows. Mouse one shows the mouse cursor, mouse two hides the mouse cursor, and mouse three reads the button status and coordinates. So this program requires Microsoft's mouse driver, mouse.com, or an equivalent DOS-based mouse driver, which must be loaded and running before use. And you know if that's running because you see the mouse moving here in the editor. If that's not running in the editor, you don't got it loaded. So variables B, H, and V are global. Uh, so be certain not to create any other variables by the same name, or you must rename these variables. Uh, be sure to hide the mouse cursor before performing any graphics functions, or else any graphics under the cursor will be garbled. We'll get to that later. But again, here's the main function here. We got sub mouse with one one parameter funk shared b h and v now this makes the button horizontal and vertical uh variables that makes them common between this subroutine and the main the main program now if funk equals one then cursor equals one what this is this prevents you from calling mouse two more than one time in a row because if you call mouse two three four five times to hide the cursor then you've got to call mouse one three or four or five times to show it again. Now, calling mouse two will always hide the cursor, but it, it's a cumulative thing. It's just a, it's a DOS thing. So in the case, if function is one, then cursor is one. That means we're turning the cursor on. If function two is function two to turn the cursor off, and the cursor is already zero, then just exit the sub. Don't do anything. And if function is 2 and cursor is 1, that means it's on, then cursor equals 0, and turn the, the cursor off. Now we see all these poke, 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 poke. Uh, Notice the poke 100, 101, and poke, here we poke funk. That's the function, that the, the parameter that we type in gets poked into here, and we poke all these other. These numbers here, this is just assembly code, which is poked in the memory of these locations, 100, 101, 102, etc. Once that's all done, poke to the machine code in, we call absolute and run it as one unit, if you will. When this is run, uh, it posts, it puts the, uh, yeah, once this is run, it puts the values for the buttons, the horizontal and vertical positions into these memory close locations that you see here. So for B, it peaks into memory H A A A A, and that's the B, the buttons, one, two, or three. Now, this is interesting. If you have a two button mouse, like I do, this guy right here, uh, the left button will show up as one, the, the right button is two, and both buttons are three. If you happen to have a three button mouse, the first, left two buttons work the same. So the left button is one, the middle button is two, uh, the, both of those are three, and the right hand button is four. Now if you hit the right and the left button, that's five, four plus one. Uh, the right and the middle button is 6, and all three buttons is 7, which few people uh, have to deal with that. But if you have a three-button three mouse, just try and run it. You'll see what happens. Any case, so there's the buttons. Now we got H is the horizontal position. Now this is a three-digit number, so it, it takes more than two bytes to, to stuff into memory. So it peaks this NHBBB plus NHBBC times 256, don't worry about the math. And the V is the same thing, it, it pokes the, the vertical position in these two locations and then stuffs that into V. That's all it does. It takes your parameter, either one, two, or three, which is stuffs in the, into the assembly right here and acts accordingly. Function one shows the, the mouse cursor, function two hides the mouse cursor, and then function three reads where it is. Uh, now you wonder, what we're doing a mouse program, we want to see the mouse cursor, right? I'm, I'm, what is good is a mouse program without a cursor? We'll get to that. Hang on just a second. So, just to recap, run this again. Yeah, so uh, we've got 
The buttons are zero. We haven't pressed anything at the moment. Our horizontal position goes up and down as we move left and right. And vertical 17 goes up and down as we move up and down. Oh, I wanted to mention one thing before I forget. You'll notice we draw, press the left button and draws the line. Clear screen, or actually end the program. But that is in screen mode 12. Now look here, view subs, boop, uh, keep your mouse. If we change this to uh, screen 13, which is only 300 pix I'm sorry, 320 pixels by 200, then we run this. We'll see something flaky happen. Check it out. Uh, okay, there's our, our numbers. They're working good. But here we go. We'll print this. Oh, wait a sec. Why? What the heck is going on here? We well, notice this is this is is drawing twice the distance as this is from the left. So if this is 10 pixels from the left, that's 20 pixels from the left. That's 50 pixels. That's 100 pixels from the left. What is going on? What do we do? Well, not to worry. It's just the way that the the DOS driver works. The mouse.com. So what we'll do for this is we'll just, where this H is, boop, just divide H by 2, run, start, and bingo, we're good. Yeah, so it draws the, our pixel, our line, what have you, buttons, horizontal, vertical, there's 1, 2, and 3, again, finito, ends program, boom. So that's it for QB Mouse. Now, I have a couple other programs I want to show you. Now, let's uh, let's fi open up. Our next program we'll call Buttons. Where are you, Buttons? I know you're there. Buttons. Boop. Okay. So this is uh, Buttons Base and written in 2016, so a while ago. Uh, but same idea. You'll see in a minute. Uh, here's, we'll run this and start. And what do we get? Well, DOSBox doing its nonsense again. Thank you, DOSBox. So we got these four buttons on screen. And if we quick, click one of them, that, look at there, the, the screen turns blue. Click this one, it turns red. Turn This this one here turns it green. And then that one turns it yellow. So that's all it does. It just changes the background color. The point here is that you click on a particular button and something happens. Uh, you could just as easily uh, set this to open the file, close the file, uh, copy, paste, exit the program, what have you. So we run this program here and then hit escape down here. Boop. To quit the program, there we go. So how's this beast work? Well, let's take a peek here. Of course, again, view subs. There's the mouse routine again, same as before. View subs, big bang, boom. Here's the main program. Uh, we start with our old friend def int a through z again to make all the variables integer by default. Just speed the thing up. Then we declare our, declare our sub mouse. That does the hard work, the, the heavy lifting, if you will, uh, with the mouse driver. Now it says background to 8, that color 8 is that gray color you see before you press any of the buttons. We go sub draw screen, now we'll come down here, draw screen, where are you, Oop, sub programs, draw screen. Uh, hits mouse 2 which turns off the mouse cursor. Screen 13 sets it in the screen mode, 320 by 200 pixels, uh, well actually 256 colors. And uh, by the way, before I forget, I will put a link to this program and all of them you'll see in this video uh, down in that what's it down there. So just don't worry about this. Download them. You'll see all this nonsense. So we start the line, blah, blah, blah. There's the background color. This is basically the whole screen. It paints it the background color. Then we got these lines and it starts painting all the buttons in, paint, paint the buttons different colors, more lines, and then the text down at the bottom here, press escape to quit. So it draws the screen, comes back up here, and what happens? Uh, mouse 1, that turns the mouse cursor back on, so visible. We go do, this is the start of our main program, and loop right there until we hit the, uh, the escape key, character 27. So what happens? We loop, we do call mouse 3. Mouse 3, if you remember, uh, the first function shows the mouse cursor, second function hides the mouse cursor, and the third function reads the mouse. Where is it? What buttons are pressed? That sort of thing. If we locate, notice we got print B, H, and V, and let's just, well, uh, that's commented out. We'll re-enable that, run this again, see what happens. You probably figured this out. It just prints. It just prints the coordinates up there, what button is pressed, so here we are, this, that, and other. Well, let's go back to here, take a look at the code. Come on, Pokey. All right, here we are at the code. Uh, it goes the main loop. Mouse 3 checks the mouse coordinates and what button is pressed. And uh, now if you press B, if B equals 1, in other words, if you press the button, then we select case V. 
Now what that does is it checks case 50 to 99, that's the top two buttons, or case 100 to 150, that's the bottom two buttons. So basically it's checking where is it. If V is, is up here in the 50 to 99, we're somewhere in this top row. So it's either top left, top right. Now we select case H to test. Well, is it top left or is it top right? 120 is left, and that sets the background to 1, which is blue. Uh, 320 to 520, that's right, the top right button, which sets the background to 4. That's red, I believe. Now, if it happens to be, if case V is 100 to 150, we're down the bottom row, we're the bottom two buttons here. So we select case H, H to decide, well, the horizontal, are, are we... 120 to 319 with left bottom left button and sets the background to two which is green or if it's uh, the bottom down here case 320 to 520 is the bottom right button and the background is set to 14 yellow we end select and the case will uh, ignore that for the moment we'll see that in a moment uh, and select go sub draw screen in other words this that we saw before, but now the background colors change. Instead of gray, it's either uh, what blue, green, yet red or yellow, and then it draws everything. And there you go. That's basically all there is to this program. Go sub mouse uh, draw screen. Do mouse three loop until B equals. Now this is interesting. It calls mouse three and then it loops. It calls mouse three and loops. Just all it does is loops until B, B equals zero. So if you happen to hold the button down, it just waits until you release the mouse button, then it goes and does the rest of the stuff. And if, and then loop until in key equals character 27. So again, until you hit character 27, the escapes key. And once that's done, it clears the screen, uh, or hides the mouse cursor, clears the screen, and system ends the program. Now you notice that I mentioned a lot about clearing, uh, hiding the mouse cursor. Well, why do you want to hide a mouse? I mean, if you've got, especially with a, a menu button, you need to know where your, your mouse is if you're going to click on something. Well, let's just do this here. Uh, da, da, da. We'll rem out the mouse to uh, there, so that's no longer active. We'll try and run this again, see what happens. All right, it seems to work pretty normally here, but if we, oh, look right there, that little glitch right there. That happened because we did not hide the mouse cursor. We just drew over it and then moved the mouse cursor, and you get this nonsense. Well, there it is again, same kind of thing. If you happen to move the mouse while you're driving, I'm sorry, if you happen to move the mouse while you're drawing, there, you get that kind of nonsense. So if you're doing any graphics with the mouse program, you want to hide the mouse cursor, do your graphics, show the mouse cursor again, and then you have no problem. So we'll escape here, boop. Back to where we were. And we'll re-enable re mouse to to call the mouse function to to uh, to display the cursor. Run again. And oh, actually, before we do that, where is notice here? Case 170 200 exit two. Well, we'll just re-enable that for the moment and run this. Boom. All right, here we go. We've got our there's blue screen, red screen, green screen, yellow screen. But here now, if we're down below all these buttons, press escape. Well, we just click here and we quit. Now that could, just like a Windows program, you could have a little red box up here or or an exit button to, to end your program. Again, as I mentioned before, whatever button in this case, the buttons just change the screen color. But you could set up five or six buttons uh, up or down, one or two or twelve rows, whatever. And if it's this, if you've Click the button, then it checks where the hell are you. If you're over here, then perform this. Here we just change the background color. But it could very just as easily open a file, close a file. It could copy paste. It could delete a file. Uh, any number of things. Or again, if you like here, it exit do that drops out of the do and ends the program. So you could have a little button, put some text on there. Uh, open file, close file, quit program, whatever. Basically, the idea is you use the the mouse to just the, the mouse cursor to determine where you are. And if you clicked in this location, you do what? If you clicked over here, you do something else. If you clicked over here, same idea. A button, uh, a menu program. So that's that. So file. Let's open another program. Again, this will. Let's see. Where are you? Uh, Pong three. Pong. Pong. Bah, 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 bah. Where is Pong three? It's in here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Bang. All right. Here we go. We brought up Pong three. Now this is. I mentioned just a moment ago that you're wondering. Well, why would you want to have a program where you don't have a mouse cursor? This should. This should uh, explain why. Now run this start here. Boom. This is just a typical Pong game. 
a DOS doing its non DOS box doing its nonsense. Now look here, it says click the mouse button when ready. But if you notice, there's no mouse cursor because it doesn't matter where we're clicking. Just click anything when ready. Now if I move the mouse left, the paddle moves left. I move it right, the paddle follows and moves right. So all I'm doing is moving the paddle left and right with the, with the mouse. Now in this case, it, we, we're not using the cursor. We're using this particular little image as paddle, and we could just as easily. I have a little character running around, uh, maybe gun sights, you're shooting things, you move with, with the, the mouse cursor, instead of seeing the, the cursor itself, you see his little gun sight, or what have you, uh, a character, some other object, a uh, hammer, you can hit something with a hammer. But basically the idea is, if we have the mouse cursor on now, the ball running around, the cursor up in here somewhere, it would just get in the way of the play, so we turn the mouse cursor off. The, since we're calling mouse 3, which reads that the mouse position, the program still knows where the mouse is. Even though we can't see it, it's still there somewhere, and the program is tracking it. So we're ready to go. We click the mouse button, boom, and there's our ball going back and forth. Uh, it's like it's muted, I think, here. Uh, is it muted? Or it kind of, yeah, volume up. We click the mouse button, ready. Here we go. And wow, it's quiet, but it is beeping. In any case, it, your typical uh, Pong game, you've got the ball. You just move your paddle underneath it, return it. Every time you return the ball, you get 10 points. And if you miss, boop. Now here I've lost my last life. And if you notice, the mouse cursor is visible again because we need to know. Are we, are we going to click on yes or no? Are we going to play again? Yes. Play again? No. So let's, let's play again. Yes. Boop. And we hide the mouse cursor. We got our paddle moving. Click the mouse when ready. We play our game. Return the ball. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm a lousy player. I lose a life. And lose another life and lose my last life, boom. Here comes the menu, play again, and the mouse cursor visible. Yes, no, well this time we'll click no, it turns off the cursor, and we're done. So there you have it. Now, now the, mouse, uh, the mouse routine here, mouse function, if you will, sub, here, it tracks the mouse. Uh, function one, again, turns on the mouse cursor, or, or makes it, displays it, displays it. Function two hides it, and function three, uh, reads where the mouse is. Even if we can't see it, it's still there somewhere and the program's keeping track of it. So, top to bottom, let's figure this out. We initialize our program, uh, def int, it sets uh, default integers to A, and, or to the variables to uh, integer by default. I think I mentioned that a couple times already. Uh, we declare a sub mouse, that, which does the heavy lifting and actually interfaces with the mouse. Now common shared is the paddle and the ball. This is shared between all the different functions so they can all move the paddle or the ball as needed. Randomize the timer. Now this just, uh, we've, <coughs> we've talked, uh, touched on randomize in the past and it just, it picks a, a random number, random direction so when we start the ball, we don't know, is it going up, is it going down, left or right. It just adds a little variety, a little, little uh, suspense to the game, if you will. Now, new game here, uh, th we just ignore this. If we uh, end our game, we want to play a new game, it just comes back to here. First time, it, well, of course it's a new game, so we just ignore that. Our lives are set to 3, score is 0, X and Y, we set them to about the middle position. We go sub do screen, so we get sub uh, do screen here. At, Redims the paddle and the ball. Now these are arrays to hold the image of the paddle and the ball. We've talked about arrays in other in other videos. We won't really go into that. But we clear the screen, set to screen 12, 320 pixels by 200, and uh, 256 colors. Now with the circle, that's the ball, paint, we line, da 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 da. We get that where we get the paddle and put paddle and get rid of it. The ball, da 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 da. -da. Basically, this just gets the image of the the ball puts it in an array, gets the paddle, puts that in an array, and uh, locates the, the prints how many lives we have, et cetera, et cetera, the score, and like that. So we've done all that, we got our information, we, we set the score, what have you, we come back to the main program. And here's the main loop right here. Do and loop until lives equals zero. So until you die. First thing we do, now I, I meant to fail to mention, uh, when we're using the mouse to, to check coordinates, first thing we want to do, we go right to the top of the of the uh, loop here and we do mouse three to check the coordinates. We want to do this immediately. It, it just, it'll work if you put it down here somewhere, but you may have old mouse, you may have moved the mouse so the horizontal is different in here. Well, this way it's immediate. You, you get to know where the mouse is right now, horizontally and vertically. It's the most up-to-date, most current, if you will, information. 
So our do loop, we do mouse three to find out where we are before we do anything else. Now, if uh, h is less than x and x is greater than three, then x equals x minus two. What's that mean? Well, if the horizontal position is less than x, where it was in the past, uh, then it, x equals x minus two. In other words, if the per cursor is to the left of the paddle, then x equals x minus two, it moves the two cursors over. Same here, if h is greater than x, if it's, it's to the right of x right now, and it's less than 525 over here, then x equals x plus two. So if the, the cur mouse cursor happens to be, even though we don't see it, if it happens to be over to the right of the paddle, we add two to x, move the paddle over to the right. So it's basically chasing the, the cursor around. The paddle's chasing the cursor. And uh, if the bx is less than three or bx equals was more than 13 that's ball horizontal and, and horizontal position then ball horizontal equals ball horizontal times one that changes the direction if it's moving left this mo turns it to right if it's moving right this turns it to left and we play sound 44 in other words if we hit, hit the wall it's less than three so we change the direction Boop play the sound a beep and then uh, the one is the duration the 440 is the pitch one's the duration uh, if by if ball y is less than three if it's reached the top uh, then bv the vertical equals one send it back down and same idea if it's bounced off the top now if by is greater than 327 and absolute bx is uh, bx minus x plus 30 is less than 50 then Ball V equals minus one, send it back up and go sub hit. What is this? Well, this is absolute BX. Uh, let's see here. If uh, BX, the ball position, is less than, if the difference between the two is less than 30 pixels, then the, the paddle is underneath there. So if the, if the paddle's over here and the ball's there, then the difference is it's 100, you know, you subtract the two, you get 100, 200 pixels. Likewise, if it's over here, you get plus 200, 200 pixels. But if they're somewhere close together, you subtract the two, if you get less than 30 pixels, then it's underneath there and it's gonna hit, land on the, the paddle. And so if it's left, uh, I'm sorry, my mistake, not 30, but if it's left than 50, then that means the difference is no more than 50 either way so that the paddle is underneath the ball and we change bv the vertical to minus one send it back up go some hit and if the b3 is greater than 376 that means it what this wasn't true we missed the paddle so it's gone to the 376 go sub miss now it just changes b x equals bx plus bh that's direction the same here we've, we've done all this in previous programs i won't go into that too much we put put the ball where it belongs put the paddle where it belongs and if life equals zero then exit the do the yeah the do so if we go to the miss we've lost a life and if it's less than zero then that we're done loop until life is equal zero and uh Oh, if lives equals zero, then exit do. Go sub game over and system. That's the end of the program. Now, in game over here, well, first of all, let's look at the subroutine. You saw Drew sc draw screen, or do screen, excuse me, that just draws a screen. Hit. Now, if we hit the ball, if the paddle was less than 50 pixels off, we play the higher pitch sound, score equals score plus 10, locate, print using the score. Now, using was something we haven't seen before, but basically what it is tells, it formats the score. In other words, when it prints it, it's using this format. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it can go up to seven digits and it'll print all seven uh, with no with leading zeros or what have you. It just, it's a way of formatting the, the display on the screen. And then, so it, all it does, if you hit, it plays this out, adds a score, prints a new score, and then returns. Miss, if we've missed the ball, then Z equals Z, or four, four Z equals 800 to 110, step minus five. We're counting down, we play the sound, it's like a meow, it's like a falling sound, bomb dropping, if you will. Uh, put the ball, line, B0, B zero uh, lives equals lives minus one, so we've lost a life. And locate, print lives, the, the, we update the life counter. If lives equals zero, then go sub game over. It goes, then goes to restart. So it goes back to the top of the loop after it subtracts a life and plays that sound. Now for game over, uh, we've got here, it draws all the boxes as you saw around and locate, print, play again, uh, here, yes or no. 
And then what we do is call this is where we call mouse one to display the cursor because remember we got the little box we want to know are we clicking on left or right? Yes or no. Uh, we can display the mouse. Now do mouse three loop while B equals zero. So until you press the button, it just loops back and forth. Once you do press the button, it doesn't do anything until you release it again. Because here, here we loop while B equals zero, and here we loop until B equals zero. So while E equals zero, I haven't pressed any buttons, it just loops, 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 loops. Once you press a button, it drops down to here. Do mouse three, read the buttons, and loop while B is zero. This way we know that we've pressed the button once, we've released it once, and now we're ready to do whatever we need to do. So if H is less than 256, then clear the mouse, or hide the mouse cursor, and go to a new game. Mouse two, hide it. So in other words, if, it, if mouse, H is greater than 256, then you've not clicked on yes, you've clicked on no. We don't do go to new game, we just clear, hide the mouse cursor, clear the screen, and system. That ends the program. So that pretty much spells it out. And again, some of the stuff uh, you should recognize from previous games, uh, like the collisions and stuff. Uh, where was it? The absolute... Oh my goodness, I don't see it now. Uh, Brain dead tonight. Uh, okay, yeah. Absolute BX minus X plus 30. Because the, the pixel, the sorry, the paddle is 60 pixels Y. So you want to move X to 30 in the middle of the pixel. So we subtract BX, the ball position, from the, the paddle position. And the difference between, between the two, if that's less than 50 pixels, then the, the paddle's underneath the ball. You've hit it, it's going to return. We send the, the, the ball back up because the, the vertical is now minus one. And then we go some hit, which plays that sound, a beep, and it adds to the score, updates the screen. Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything we need to know about uh, about using the mouse. And if you if this is all confusing, just start with QB mouse again. In fact, we'll open that up again now. Open, it's the simplest thing, and it's got, uh, where is it? QB mouse, where are you hiding? right there bang got all of our, our uh, comments here to explain what happens on each line but basically the idea of view subs the mouse sub hey come here there it is as I mentioned earlier you got mouse one two and three the three functions mouse one shows the mouse cursor mouse two hides the mouse cursor even though it's still there we can't see it it's still there and then mouse three reads what buttons are pressed if any and the mouse coordinates so all you need to know to, to access the mouse, or to, to use the mouse in a game, whether it's a menu, or, um, to use the mouse in a program, whether it's a menu, whether it's a game, what have you. you basically, you either you see the cursor, oh, and by the way, this little block, let's see, run this here. Now, if you notice, boom, we got, all right, we've got the mouse cursor's this little arrow. This, this is in, in screen mode thir 12, excuse me. So if we go to... View subs, here we go, screen 13, which is lower resolution. Run, start, we've got lower resolution, and of course the, the arrow key is bigger. And finally, we close this out. Not sure if this will run in zero. Screen zero, run, start. And now it's a block. And now, of course, it's illegal. It won't draw draw a, a spot because it's not a graphics function. But if you notice, instead, okay, okay, run, restart. Come on, start. Ah, oh, what is your problem? Anyway, I, right right now it's this box. Now that's all taken care of by the the mouse driver, that mouse.com. Don't have to worry about this. If it, it it detects whatever mode you're in, and if it's mode 12, then it, it shows that smaller arrow. If it's mode 13, in other words, whenever you change the screen mode, the mouse curse, the mouse program, excuse me, the mouse driver detects that and draws the appropriate cursor, whether it's a small arrow, a large arrow, or that box. Uh, I believe that's pretty much all I have for now, and so yeah, oh, that, can't leave yet. We gotta do our superiors, they're coming up, hang on, that'll be cool, and then I guess I'll see you when, when we're done with superiors. You take care, check this out, see you in a bit. Superiors! Superiors! 
well, it's, it's time for superiors, and in this superior segment, I will be talking about a, a YouTube page called, uh, YouTube channel called Pixel Amusement, and I'll show you a, a screenshot of that too. Pixel Amusement, it's called. Now, Pixel, Pixel Amusement, uh, basically, it really is it's not so much about programming, it's really about uh, ancient DOS games. In other words, they'll dig up an old game like Duke Nukem and review it and tell what, what's good or bad about it. Uh, so it's fun just watching for that. But oddly enough, he happens to have a filler video. It's filler ADG Ancient Dots Games filler 52, I think. Uh, it's, it's called Crash Course in QBasic. And it's really quite uh, quite compre comprehensive for a crash course. Uh, I was impressed with it myself, being that it's not particularly a programming page or channel. Uh, yeah, he's got this video. It's over an hour long. A lot of good. I mean, it'll get you started. Nothing too advanced, but if you, well, hopefully you'll have learned mo most of what he has to show you from my videos. But if this is the first one you're seeing, check out Pixel Amusement. His video is actually really good. It's called QBasic Crash Course, and it's Q, uh, a ADG Agent DOS Games. Filler number 52. I believe it's 52, but QB, uh, well, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll share a link to it down below, so don't even bother uh, searching for it. Just click that link. And like I say, it's a great video. It's all about QBasic. It's a good crash course. Very thorough for an hour. You get a lot of information. Well done, Pixel Amusement. Thank you for that. And when you're done with that, just check out. There's some fun videos on all the reviews. Oh, who doesn't love love DOS games? Come on. I mean, <laughs> I grew up on them. I know a lot of folks as well that did. So check it out. Have fun. And uh, there's lots lots of good stuff to see there. So Pixel Amusement, thank you for your good work. And uh, cheers. Hey there, gang. Well, listen up now. Whoops, I almost forgot to mention that down there in the description-y thing, you'll, of course, find links to the three files we used in this video, namely qbmouse.base, buttons.base, and pong3.base. But I should also point out another link to a file called mouse.sub. Be sure to download this file as well because it's a template for creating new mouse-driven programs. Essentially, it's a program file which contains a mouse sub-procedure and a declaration, but otherwise it's blank. To create a new program with mouse functionality, you just open this file, enter whatever code you like, and then save it with an appropriate new name. The file has the .sub extension to prevent accidental overwrites, as you must look specifically for this extension, which should identify it as a template file, one that should not be edited directly. We'll use this trick with other files in the future. All right, that's all I got to add. Now back to the video. All right, well, I believe that about wraps it up for this this vi uh, this episode. Uh, hopefully, you'll be have fun using the mouse, and we'll cover more programs with the mouse. See, it's simple. It, once you get the hang of it, it's trivial, really. It's three functions: show mouse cursor, hide mouse cursor, and read where it is, its position, and what buttons are pressed. That's all you need. So we'll do some fun stuff in the future, and. Yeah, I guess that wraps it up for this episode. Did I just say that? Deja vu. So, all right then. See you, bye. Hasta la pizza, baby.